What is reality? How does a film define the reality experienced by a viewer? The elements of cinematic form are the building blocks used by the director to forge the feeling of a film. In the 2010 film Inception, director Christopher Nolan molds an illusory reality. The two and a half hour action sci-fi draws the viewer into a story where the lines of reality and illusion are blurred. We follow the story of Dominic Cobb through a third person perspective as he journeys around the world hoping to be able to return to his children after false accusations of murdering his wife. He works as a dream extractor, a fictional career in which he surreptitiously enters the minds of others through dreams to steal information for paid clients. The introduction of the film recounts Cobb's attempt to extract confidential information via a dream world from Sato, a powerful business magnet. In the first 20 minutes of Inception, Nolan builds and breaks an illusion through masterful set design and editorial choices. Nolan's use of mise-en-scene, alongside editing choices, draw the viewer onto a set of false assumptions. Let's take a look. A masterpiece of editing technique, Inception's introduction cuts between three different naturalistic settings, each consistent with the laws of nature. These timelines are the Japanese castle, Moroccan apartment, and the Shinkansen. Beginning in the Japanese castle, Cobb and his partner Arthur interact with Sato, attempting corporate espionage. The mise-en-scene, namely the set design, is naturalistic, allowing viewers to view the location as a lifelike environment. The classical Japanese shoji and fusuma create an alluring effect. The warm color given off from the on-screen lanterns denotes safety, a feeling expected in the beginning of a film. Failing in their attempt to steal information from Sato, Cobb and Arthur notice shifts in their environment. The Japanese lanterns shake in uniform, as if an earthquake has struck the city. Without explanation, the scene cuts to a macro insert of Cobb's watch. The use of this macro acts as what appears to be an ellipsis, an abridgment in time between locations. In what feels like a different time, the audience believes they are viewing a memory or far-off experience. Nolan writes in his shooting script, We see our characters sedated in a picturesque Moroccan apartment. Once again, the set design, with its warm tonality of the walls, convinces us of the security of the location. However, as Nash and aide to Cobb adjust the curtains, another element of conflict in the background is revealed. The scene cuts to another insert of a watch. Seconds tick slower and slower, as does the reality outside the apartment. In another perceived ellipsis, we return to the first timeline with Cobb and Arthur in the Japanese castle. As they discuss their meeting with Saito, their environment begins to change. The castle shakes and its shingles collapse. Later in the scene, Cobb returns to Sato's safe to steal confidential information. The lights turn on, and we see Arthur held at gunpoint. In this scene, the first illusion is broken. Sato discovers the environment is constructed, all part of Arthur's dream. Now the envelope, Mr. Cobb. Did she tell you? Have you known all along? Are you here to steal from me, or do we are actually asleep? With no other escape, Cobb shoots Arthur, sending him back to reality. A swift inner cut to Arthur's face ties the first and second locations together, revealing to the viewer that the scenes in Morocco and Japan occurred simultaneously. As Arthur awakens in the Moroccan apartment, the dream he once inhabited begins to collapse. The set design shifts dramatically. Supporting beams, lanterns, and artifacts fly around, representative of the ending dream world. Unable to awaken Cobb from his dream state, Arthur tells Nash, Give him the cake! What? Duncan. Water floods the main hall of the castle, as the shot intercuts to Cobb falling backward into a full bath. In classical literature, water is symbolic of the unconscious. This wave acts to awaken Cobb from his unconscious state, propelling him into a new reality in the Moroccan apartment. The use of slow motion in The Kick is highly intentional. In a dream, your mind functions more quickly, therefore, time seems to feel more slow. Five minutes in the real world gives you an hour in the dream. Water pours down upon Cobb in regular motion, while he falls into the full bathtub in slow motion. The use of slow motion furthers the narrative of the story, tying together the dream world and perceived reality. As Sato and the crew awaken, the mob outside draw nearer to their location. A speed ramp suddenly cuts with the support of an ellipsis to another timeline, one where Nash sits on the Shinkansen bullet train. The shot intercuts with another macro of a watch. 
Then the scene cuts back in time to Cobb's interaction with Sato in the Moroccan apartment. As Cobb throws Sato to the ground, he makes a discovery of the environment. <laughs> I've always hated this carpet. It's stained and frayed in such distinctive ways. But very definitely made of wool. Why now? A line of polyester. Which means I'm not lying on my carpet in my apartment. You have lived up to your reputation, Mr. Carr. I'm still dreaming. The most important element of the mise-en-scene, the set design, has served to convince the audience of the reality of the environment. However, the mise-en-scene in this scene acts to pull Sato out of the invented reality. Nolan's choice of materials for the set design is carefully selected. Polyester is often noted as a synthetic alternative to wool. Made to imitate higher quality fibers like wool, the fabric choice for the rug is symbolic of the imitated dream environment. As the altered perception of the Moroccan apartment reveals itself, the ensuing mob takes hold of Nash. In the shot, Nolan utilizes a speed ramp. The acceleration of the shot is used to transition from the slow dream world to the new reality. The use of the speed ramp also gives the audience a feeling of whiplash as they make the same realization as Sato. The scene ends with Cobb, Arthur, and Nash escaping before Sato catches them in the new reality. At the core of Inception's illusion is a pattern of naturalistic set design and unclear cross-cutting. First, the set design draws the viewer in building the perceived reality. Then, the scene utilizes a perceived ellipsis to transition between three times and spaces. A realization is then made by the characters and the ellipsis reveals itself to be a cross-cut in disguise. This pattern serves the purpose of connecting the three different elements as one concurrent event. Unsuspectingly manipulating the audience, these editing techniques cause the viewer to question what is reality in the entire film. And while this question is utilized as a cliffhanger at the end of the film, its introspective nature places the viewer into Cobb's own experience. The mise-en-scene entrenches the audience into believing the illusion, and the editing breaks them out of it. What I felt I'd never seen was the portrayal of, of a dream that you could believe in its reality. That is to say, one of the key lines in the film is dreams feel real while we're in them. And so I wanted to make a film where the experience of dreaming was addressed in that real way. So even as something extraordinary is happening, you're invested in the, in the reality of that world. Thank you so much for watching this video. Inception is one of my all-time favorites, and it was a lot of fun to analyze what made this movie so special. If you have any other movie suggestions, feel free to type them in the comments below. Until next time.